Okay, good point that Cisco brought up, and we're just going to touch on it briefly here to demonstrate what he said, because a lot of times a, a visual and auditory is better than just reading the text. I'm taking a G chord here, and I'm using the E form at the third position. Okay, here's my root, here's my third, here's my five, and here's my root again. Now, if I take the root and the third, I have a major third. Now, in Brown Eyed Girl, those are the two notes, although not in that order. That would be in third. Major third, minor third, minor third. Now, if I invert that, if I put the low note an octave up, I'm still starting with the G and a B, but now the B's on the bottom and the G's on the top. Now, this G to a B is a major third. That B to that G is a minor six. And that's because of the intervals. And if you look at the interval page, I think you'll find that. There's a minor six, major six, major six. Although if I did it in thirds, it would be major third, minor third, minor third. So the major third inverts to the minor six. And the minor third inverts to the major six. And uh, while we're on that subject, fourths and fifths invert to each other in the bottom of the chord. I have the root and the five. That's G to a D. And then I have D to a G. This D to that G is a fourth. This G to that D is a fifth. So G to a D is a fifth. D to a G is a fourth. Fifths invert to fourths. And they're ne neither major nor minor. If you haven't caught that before, fifths and fourths are perfect intervals. You have a, a perfect fifth and you have a perfect fourth. So you don't have to worry about whether they're major or minor. But the third, you have a major third inverts to a minor six, and a minor third inverts to a major six. Try that.